So before we get into this, just some quick background on how I came about this. Uh, the other day, I logged into my email and was checking my email and came across a very apparent, at least to me, the, the trained eye, um, a phishing attempt, but it was a very good phishing attempt, and that really piqued my interest. Uh, it ended up being a example of Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection, or Office 365 ATP Attack Simulator, in particular one of the new templates that they're using in that particular product. And again, I found the, the sample phishing email pretty good. Uh, there were some obvious items that you'll see here that jumped out at me uh, as, as being a phishing attempt. But again, I thought that the, the template being used was, was very, very good. So I did some digging and ended up that, yes, my organization was uh, testing its users with Attack Simulator. Uh, but I wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, what we were doing. So that's how I came across that. Uh, two quick points of knowledge before we get into this any further. Uh, number one, uh, Attack Simulator is part of ATP Plan 2. So that used to be called uh, Threat Intelligence Standalone. Uh, so it is included in Office 365, excuse me, Microsoft 365 E5. Uh, it's also included in Microsoft 365 A5. Um, if you subscribe to that, um, it is not included in uh, ATP Plan 1, which used to be called ATP Standalone. So just so you know the licensing of it. Number two is that there are actually two different attack simulators within Microsoft 365, Office 365. One of them, and the one that we're going to be focusing on, is the newer of the two, and that is located at security.microsoft.com. The old one is located at protection.office.com. And it does a similar thing, but it doesn't include the templates. Uh, it doesn't include the training. And uh, so what I'd like to do is just take a minute to walk through this phishing email that you see here on your screen. Take a minute to look through the things that I saw and that you probably see as well um, and point out some things that you may not see. Uh, so, so first of all, I find it interesting that the, the title of the email, the subject line, includes the message malicious email. Um, I find that pretty funny. Um, also, we've got this weird uh, dollar sign date variable, which, which isn't resolved. Um, the other thing that jumps out at me right away is that it comes from Leah Stevens, who supposedly is the senior escrow officer at First American Title Insurance Company. Uh, but her email address is lstevens at tncstamping.com, not something to do with First American Title Insurance Company. Uh, there's a number of things going on here. We've got a Word doc that's attached to this. We've got a link. We've got some kind of weird PDF type item here that doesn't resolve. It's just uh, some information. Uh, and then, of course, I really enjoy this little line here that says, this email contains a unique token and secure link to a document. Do not share this email or link with any other person. So that would, of course, um, dissuade you from sharing it with anyone else. So it's a pretty good phishing email. Uh, I found it pretty interesting that the telephone number, when called, uh, actually does go to uh, an, an actual uh, insur title insurance company, a mortgage company, I believe, is what it is. Um, and so the idea here is that if you click on this link here that says review closing document, uh, you just end up at Microsoft.com. Uh, but as part of Attack Simulator, what happens is if you click on that link, um, or try to access that closing docs.docx, uh, that Word doc up there, uh, that is logged, that attempt is logged. And then later on, you will receive an email. And so the email looks like this, and it, 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 it's pretty simple. Uh, you get 30 days to take the class, or the training course, if you will. And uh, it just says, you know, real simply, because you were recently fished, we require you to take a training course to recognize phishing attacks in the future. If you're not able to take the training right now, use the attached ICS to schedule some time on your calendar to take the training. And when you click to this, uh, click this button that says go to training, you end up 
at a website, logged in with your user credentials, not admin credentials of any kind, just pass through authentication with your user credentials at security.microsoft.com, and you see that you have some training assignments due, and the one in particular um, that was the focus of this uh, attack simulator campaign is malware. And so you can see it's a pretty good little training course. Um, there's a video that you can watch. And then there's some click through content that you can look at. And there are some knowledge check questions as you go throughout it. And then at the end, there is um, kind of like a little, I don't know what you'd call it, you know, a little, little exam, if you will. And so it's just designed to educate your users about what malware is, about what phishing is, a computer worm, Trojan horse, etc. Uh, it's, it's really good, but very basic training. Uh, and it's all sort of included right within Attack Simulator. So I thought that was a really compelling use case for Attack Simulator. Uh, again, the, um, the thing that got me was on the old Attack Simulator that was at protection.office.com, you had to write your own templates. And that was kind of difficult and kind of a pain. Uh, the new version located at security.microsoft.com comes with a number of templates. So let's dig into those templates and let's look at, um, now that we've seen the result of what a attack simulator campaign would look like against a user, let's take a look at what it would look like in the administration console. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to security.microsoft.com and log in with your administrative credentials. And then you're looking at attack simulator over on the left hand side. Now you will notice if you do not have multi-factor authentication turned on that enabling MFA for your admin account is a requirement for launching attack simulator campaigns. I will state however that if you are down the rabbit hole of securing your Microsoft environment such that you are interested in launching attack simulator and still not utilizing multi-factor authentication for your administrative credentials, I think that you've got, in my opinion, um, some prioritization to do. I would recommend that you use MFA and get that configured prior to even worrying about attack simulator. Uh, but as you can see here, we can select a social engineering technique. There are four basic items. Uh, the one that I got uh, hit with was malware attachment, and that's the one that you saw earlier. Uh, we also have credential harvest, link and attachment, and then just plain link to malware. And once we select malware attachment, we'll come up, we can just enter a basic name for the simulation. And then this is the item where we can select the payload. So this is where we really fell short last time around on the old attack simulator located at protection.office.com where we had to generate our own templates. Uh, but here we have three templates that have already been uh, created for us. We have a fax file review, we have a real estate title settlement, and we have a Xerox scan document. So uh, we're going to choose real estate title settlement. That's the one that, again, I hit, got hit with and you saw earlier. You can, of course, create your own with create a payload just like you did in the past. But again, that was a very difficult scenario to try to come up with um, and, and really compose a template for these campaigns. So you just select that option. And then next you're coming to the option where you figure out which users you're going to target. Now you can of course include all users in my organization or you can include only specific users and groups. Uh, for a test scenario, I would recommend just running it on maybe just your IT folks. So just choosing that specific group of folks. But if you'd like to, you can begin with all of the users in your organization. And then finally after that, once you select your users, uh, you now get to the option of training. And this is the idea that if they sort of fall for the phishing campaign, what do you want to happen? And this is the, the I really think the thing that, that ties it all together. So this is just some basic options um, of what training should be assigned to them. So you can have the option of it automatically assigning training for them, or you can select specific training courses and modules. In this case, I just went with assign the training for me, uh, it then selected the malware training campaign, and then um, selecting a due date. So 30 days after the simulation ends is, is perfectly fine for my um, opinion. 
And then we have um, sort of the training landing pages, just some options and comments as to you know what they're going to receive uh, when they get the you know assigned training. And then finally, you have an option of when do you want to launch the attack simulation? Do you want to do it as soon as you click go, or do you want to schedule this for some later date? And finally, after that, you kind of just click submit, and, and that's all there is to it. Uh, when you come back in here and do attack simulator, you can view all of your campaigns. And again, this is a sample demo tenant, so I have it actually logged in as an end user and um, taken a look at one of these emails and then either did not open the attachment or did open the attachment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it's a good way to quickly look at you know what's going on, how many users were compromised by this, how effective was this, and then finally how many users were able to complete the training. It's a really great, really handy thing. Again, if you've got ATP, if you're already licensed for this, uh, I certainly would be running these just as a course of, uh, you know, maybe once or twice a year. Um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, if you're not, I think it's a really compelling reason. Uh, E5 is a great, great, great value. I know it is um, just looked at alone, a little pricey, but it's a great, great value for what you're getting. And again, I think that uh, ATP is certainly one of those things that you obviously get with E5 or A5. Um, and then attack simulators just kind of icing on the cake for driving that value home for these. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Thanks so much.